The Boston Celtics have two glaring issues that they need to solve if they want to avoid clumsy losses versus some low-ranked teams like the Charlotte Hornets. The Celtics unfortunately fell to the Hornets in overtime, and with some mistakes that could have been easily changed, they could have come out with a nice victory tonight. We'll explore what the Boston Celtics need to adjust to continue a great dominance in Eastern Conference in this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez, but before we get into any Boston Celtics news, I would like to say shout out to everyone who has subscribed to the Celtics Digest family. We recently just hit 2,200 subscribers, and we can't thank everyone enough that's already hit that subscribe button. But if you guys want to make sure you guys stay up to date on everything Boston Celtics, including videos uploaded daily for you guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we will be contributing for you guys and putting out that content. Anything related to trades, rumors, even potential live streams with you guys, we'll have all of that with Boston Celtics coverage. So make sure to stay tuned with that. But let's dive into the post-game reactions ahead of tonight's game versus the Charlotte Hornets. Make sure to grab a snack and grab everybody as it's going to be a nice jam-packed episode. But let's look at how the Celtics collapsed in tonight's game versus the Charlotte Hornets. Honestly, I was expecting a big blowout win for the Boston Celtics. Charlotte Hornets haven't had a great regular season start, even though they just got back Miles Bridges, who had an impactful game tonight. He hasn't, he's been coming off the bench. They don't have their true guys already there. And they have injuries as well. Terry Rozier, I believe, had an injury, was out tonight. So the Charlotte Hornets are a little bit of a weaker team. And even though the Boston Celtics did have injuries in their own, having guys like Al Horford and Derek White sit out tonight, I expected Jason Tatum to have a master class game and the Boston Celtics to come out with an expected, you know, 20 point win. Unfortunately, I was wrong on one of those things. Jason Tatum had a fantastic game for the Boston Celtics also with Peyton Pritchard, but unfortunately the Celtics could not get it done. Let's look at the stats here for the game. The Celtics shot 43% from the field, worse than the Charlotte Hornets, and shot worse from three-point range, only shooting 32%. But the main overlook right here is the free throw percentage. The Celtics shooting 64% from free throws, missing 10 free throws in a very close game for the Charlotte Hornets, a three-point game. If the Celtics hit at least half of those free throws, there's no even need for overtime. That is a something that we have to talk about with the Boston Celtics. Also, looking at the rebounds, they got out-rebounded by the Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets had a lot more of second-chance points and a lot more offensive rebounds in the Boston Celtics. Celtics only had 19 assists compared to the Hornets, 29. Also, same amount of turnovers, same amount of steals, less points in the paint. Celtics just did not have the greatest offensive night. And after coming off that back-to-back -back versus Memphis, where they had a big block by Kristaps Porzingis to seal the game, and after having not the greatest offensive night and not the greatest rebounding night versus the Grizzlies, they came out and did the same thing versus the Hornets. We'll be looking at the team stats right here. Obviously, with no Derek White, Sam Hauser got the start, and he did not perform the best for the Celtics, only shooting one for nine from the field, a very bad shooting night from Sam Hauser, but he did help out the Boston Celtics on the defensive side of the ball. I don't want to hear all this hate about Sam Hauser being a bad defender. He is a great shooter for the Boston Celtics, but he had the best defensive rating in the whole league last season across the whole NBA, and this season he stepped up big on his defensive side, played some great paint defense, and has some great advanced statistics in the defensive side, so I don't want to hear any hate on my boy Sam Hauser here. Jason Tatum had, like I said, had a spectacular game for the Boston Celtics, finishing with 45 points with 31 of those points being in the first half with 13 rebounds and eight assists. The one problem I'll say with the Boston Celtics is they did not beat Jason Tatum in the second half. Kristaps Porzingis one, had a solid game for the Boston Celtics, finishing with 17 points and eight rebounds. Not the greatest shooting night for Porzingis, though. Only one for eight from three, but he was still solid on the paint defense and scoring in the paint. Jalen Brown, again, I know all you haters are going to be calling him out for his inefficient shooting tonight, but he had some solid plays driving to the rack, and it was just that the Hornets had really good paint defense versus Jalen Brown. He wasn't able to score. The Celtics were able to score a lot from the three-point range tonight, luckily to the success of Jason Tatum and Peyton Pritchard, but no other Celtic could basically hit any shots from three. Jalen Brown attempted to attack at the rim and scored offense uneffectively could score that much at the rim, but when he was attacking at the rim with ease, he was scoring and he played solid on defense. Drew Holiday, overall solid game for the Boston Celtics. The seven turnover is not the greatest for him, but still finishing with 11 points. And Sam, or Peyton Pritchard, sorry, came out and had a big game for the Boston Celtics. He is back shooting eight for 14 from the field, five for eight from three, 
finishing with 21 points and six rebounds. Also finishing with two offensive rebounds and three assists. We also saw some minutes from Luke Cornett, Svima High, Luke O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea Brissett got a lot of minutes in the beginning of the game to bring out some energy, go after those offensive rebounds. He wasn't the main solution for the Boston Celtics tonight, and neither was Luke Cornett, as Luke Cornett did a solid effort but couldn't contribute the most. Overall, though, the two major things that we need to talk about with the Boston Celtics right now are their free throws and their offensive rebounds. Those are the main two issues that the Boston Celtics need to fix. Now, I know when you talk about the free throw percentage, we've saying that if you want to look at the stats again, they shot 65% from free throw tonight. Terrible from free throw. And every game that I've watched the Boston Celtics play this season, I've noticed that the opponent has outshot us on free throw percentage every single night. I want you to comment down in the comments if you can find a particular game this season where the Celtics have shot better from free throw than their opponent. Because to my knowledge, I can't remember it off the top of my head. And that is a major issue. These are free points. Points from the charity strike free throw line that they want to call it and our players can't hit them Peyton Pritchard yesterday missed two clutch free throws Jason Tatum right here at the end of the game on a foul at three-point line to tie up the game misses the last free throw we also had Jalen Brown miss two free throws today it is a necessary thing that these guys need to hit these free throws and get these free points as we could have escaped overtime or possibly even had a bigger lead in overtime if they hit these free throws Joe Mazzula needs to be preaching the free throws at practice and making sure that they are doing free throws all week this week in preparation for the Milwaukee Bucks game and for the Orlando Magic game as those are going to be defensive battles and making sure that we can attack the rim and make those free easy points when we get five is necessary to win those games and if we cannot do that it is a glaring issue for the Boston Celtics we saw this in with last year's team we're seeing it with this year's team it is something that needs to be worked on also something that needs to be worked on is the offensive rebounding tonight as you guys can see we look back at the stats the Hornets only had five more offensive rebounds than the Boston Celtics and even though the Hornets only had six more field goal attempts than the Boston Celtics they had a lot more second chance points than the Celtics and the last game versus the Memphis Grizzlies last night it was the same issue with this Celtics team not enough offensive rebounds and not enough second chance points the Grizzlies had over 20 shots compared to the Celtics yesterday and even though the Hornets did not capitalize that much tonight against the Celtics a lot of their second chance points were from threes that highly impacted this Hornets team to take back the lead and to go on these runs to push the Celtics into a little bit of scaredom. Ultimately, the Celtics had some solid performances still. Jason Tatum had a killer performance, putting up 45 points, absolutely dominating the Charlotte Hornets like I thought he would and like he did last year as well. And Peyton Pritchard woke up from his slump, hitting his shots, driving for those offensive rebounds. We saw Peyton Pritchard attacking the glass tonight, looking for assists. Peyton Pritchard, he hasn't had the greatest shooting nights this season, but he's been impactful for this Celtics team. And even though he was hitting his shots, he was still being impactful on the glass and dishing out passes, which is great to see from Peyton Pritchard. Hopefully this slump can go out of the way. Peyton Pritchard can break out of his shooting slump and he can be ready to go and be lights out for the Celtics like he had been in the preseason and him and Sam Hauser can be the two effective scorers for this bench unit. Ultimately, the Celtics lost tonight's game because of offensive rebounding and free throw percentage. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What was your guys' main reason for the Celtics losing tonight's game? The Celtics have two more impactful games this week. They go against the Milwaukee Bucks on Wednesday, which should be a classic in Boston. And on Friday afternoon at 2.30, they take on the Orlando Magic in an in-season tournament game. Both impactful games and both really really good games to watch so make sure you guys tune into that and we'll have more coverage to break down all those games for you guys if you guys are still at this point in the video and still aren't subscribed make sure to hit that subscribe button as we know you guys enjoy this celtics content sadly the celtics lose tonight 121 to 118 but hopefully they can bounce back versus the milwaukee bucks i'm bruce velez i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out and have a great rest of your night